This is where big decisions are made on behalf of San Antonians. But in the early 1970s, Rosie Castro says the people in charge didn't reflect the entire community. When it comes to city government, how has representation changed? It's changed significantly from when I was young. What was wrong at the time, though, is that the Latino population kept growing in San Antonio, and yet we had very little representation. At the time, at-large members made up the council, which means that there were no individual districts. All council members represented all parts of the city, or at least that was the idea. And you would see the council living on the north side and being Anglos mainly. In 1975, the city went through a major annexation. Castro says it gave people the chance to challenge the form of representation. Before 1975, someone in the Thompson neighborhood might not necessarily have had representation for someone who lives in that part of town. Right. And absolutely wouldn't have, would not have had. In 1971, uh, several of us ran, four of us ran under uh, the banner of the good government of the Committee for Barrio Betterment. While Castro and the others didn't get elected, it did lead to change. In 1976, retired St. Mary's professor Charlie Cottrell says the Justice Department challenged the at-large structure. And it turned out that the election changes in San Antonio and Bear County were deemed to be um, unconstitutional under Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. In 1977, a majority of San Antonians voted to switch to single-member districts. I think Thompson was right in here. Which is what's in place today. What does that tell you? Well, what, what it told the voters at that time is, is that they had been underrepresented severely from 1961 to 1975 by the at-large system.